Math 3, Unit 5, Section 2. Today we're going to talk about multiplying and dividing rational, or sorry, radical expressions. So, we know how to simplify these expressions based on what we did yesterday. So, let's go ahead and just remind ourselves, what does it mean when you have a cubed root like this? How many do you need for a group? Three. Three. And so, I'd break this down to, what two numbers multiply to be 24? Okay, so you can get 8 and 3, 6 and 4, whatever you choose, it doesn't matter. You'll still end up with the same answer. And then I know that 8 breaks down to 2 times 2 times 2. So I have one group of 2s and a 3 left over. With my x's, how would I write that out? Good, x cubed and x. So I have one group of x's and then one left over. And so when I write this answer, what does it become? It's just going to be 2x, and then we have the cubed root, and whatever is left inside, we multiply that together, and that stays inside. So we are left with 3x inside. So remember that anything that you circle just becomes one of whatever your circled group is. Okay? And also don't forget if this is a cubed root that you need to write a cubed root in your answer. So you'll notice on B, what type of root does that have? A fourth root. So that means how many do I need for my group? Four. Good. And so what two numbers multiply to be 64? Eight times eight. And then I know that each eight is good. Two times two times two. So I need four for a group. So I go ahead and circle those four twos. And I have two twos left over. You could box them up separately. You can box them together. Whatever makes the most sense to you. Okay. So from there, do I have any groups of x's? No, and so I'm just going to go ahead and box that because I don't have enough to make a group. And for the y's, I would write that as y to the fourth and then y squared because those make six, so I have one group and then I have two left over. So... On the outside, what will we end up with? <clears throat> 2y, good, because we have one group of 2s, one group of y's, and then we have the fourth root, and we multiply everything together. That's left in a box, so 2 times 2 makes 4, and then we have x to the third y squared. And it's always a good idea to write your letters in alphabetical order. With the y to the third, you could, but you need four Y's for a group. Oh. And so that's normally whatever type of group I need, I usually write it with that as making one group. You could also write out all six of them. You could write out six Y's and then circle four of them. Okay? All right. So when you're multiplying and simplifying over reals, um, they have to both be the same type of roots. So if you're going to multiply these together, as long as they're both cubed roots, you're good. If you had a cubed root and a square root, you couldn't multiply them together. They have to be the same type of roots in order to, to multiply them together. When, for this problem here, since they're both cubed roots and they're multiplying, I end up just writing them under one root. So cubed root of nine times 81. And the reason why I don't usually multiply the numbers together is because we're gonna break them down anyways because we wanna make groups of numbers. And so if I multiply them together, it's almost like I'm adding on extra an extra two steps because I'm not only multiplying, but then I'm gonna have to go back and break it down again. Okay, and then if I need three for a group, what would I do next here? Yeah, break down 81, right? Because what is 81? nine and nine. So by doing that, I don't even have to break these down any further because do you see how I have three nines? Now, if you decided to break the nines down into threes, you could, but then you'd end up with two separate groups of threes, which then when you pull them out and multiply them together, you're still gonna get the answer of nine. So if you have larger numbers that make a group, it just makes less work for yourself, but you could do it either way. So this answer ends up being nine and there is nothing left over. Do we have any questions there? Okay, 
so on this next one, the negatives can be kind of tricky. You normally should take those out first. Okay, and so this would be a negative and the cubed root of 20 times a negative and the cubed root of 50. Well, when we're multiplying these together, you would multiply outsides and outsides as well. So two negatives actually end up making a positive. So we know it's going to be a positive, and now I'm going to write this as the cubed root of 20 times 50. Now, sometimes it's easier to multiply the numbers together. Sometimes it's easier to break them down, whatever you decide you want to do. So if we're dealing with the cubed root, how many do I need for a group? Three. And so if I break down 20, what does 20 break down to be? Five and four. And then four breaks down to two and two. With 50, what does 50 break down to? Okay, 5 and 10 or 25 either way. And then 5 breaks down to, I mean, sorry, 10 breaks down to 5 and 2 or 2 and 5. So even though my numbers aren't all together, I sometimes like will just like circle and connect them. So those twos make a group. And then with the fives, do you see as well, those fives make a group. And do I have anything left over? No. And so when I bring out each of those groups, what does my answer become? 10 and there's nothing left over. Is anybody confused or have questions for me? Yes. So do they usually just break down to one number? Not always, no. Okay. Let's move on to C. So this one, when we're multiplying, we are distributing root two to each of these terms. So root two times root 18, I can write that as root two times 18 under the same root. Okay, and then we have root two times five. How would I write that? Good plus five square root two. Is everybody good with that? Okay, so next we wanna simplify this, okay? And so what would I break 18 down to? And then nine breaks down to, and how many do I need for a group here? Just two. So we have a group of twos and also a group of threes. So what does that end up becoming? Six. So I have six plus five root two. Now, if both of these were root twos, if they had the same root at the end, I could add them or subtract them together. But since this number is a six and it doesn't have a root and this one does, we can't add them together. They have to be like radicals in order for you to add them together. Okay, any questions on that one? Okay, D. What happens when we have a negative under a square root? We bring it to the outside, but it becomes a what? An I. And they want us to only multiply and simplify over, rule, uh, over reals. And so is this going to be a real number? No. no. And so we're just going to write no real solutions. So because they only want real solutions, we don't have to go any further on that one. Okay, on the next one, do you notice anything about E? Yeah, one is a square and one is a cube. So can I multiply those together? No. And so this answer is in the simplified form. You would just write it as the cubed, or sorry, the square root of three times the cubed root of five. That would be simplified as far as it could go. Or you could say cannot be simplified if you want to. Um, these two answers are different, though, because this one doesn't have a real solution. And so that's different than this one. Because this is a real answer. It's just you can't go any further. Okay, and if you notice F, yes? So like if both radicals were negative, would it still be no solution? Yes, because remember how I said you need to take negatives out first? 
And so if you took each of the negatives out, you'd end up with an I. Um, actually, then you could go further on it, yes. Because then we know that I times I ends up making a negative one. So yes, you're correct. Yes, yes. Okay, um, do you guys notice something about F? So I don't think we need to do it. What about you guys? Okay, yes. Yep, or you could write um, cannot be simplified further. Um, and why can't it be simplified again? Yeah, because it has the different roots. So this one, you know, is a square root and this one is a cubed root, and so we can't put them together. Are we okay? Yes. All right. Um, I'm a little sick for some reason. <laughs> okay, next one. Not sure why we're starting back at A again, but we are. So, we're multiplying. Are they both square roots? Yes. Yes. So, we can end up putting them together. And again, I feel like putting them together is easiest to do that first. And so, we're going to write this as a square root. And I'm going to put my numbers together. So, I have 45 times 35. And then how many x's total do I have right now? Six. I'm going to write that as x to the sixth. And y to the seventh. And then I'm going to start breaking it down. So we need two for a group. 45 breaks down to what? Nine and five. And then nine is three and three. So I have a pair right there. 35 breaks down to? Good. So I'm going to write that as 5 and 7, and I have a pair of 5s, and we'll have a 7 left over. Because this is a square root, how should I write down, or break down my x's? As squares, right? And so we're going to add them all up. So that's x squared and x squared and x squared. 2 plus 2 plus 2 makes 6. And so we end up with three groups of x's. How will I write out the y's? Good, the same way. And then we have one left over. So two, four, six, and then one left over. So we multiply everything together and bring it to the outside. And so my number that I bring out will be what? 15, and then x to what power? Good, and y to the third? And then leftover inside is going to be good, 7y. I always like to go through and highlight any of my boxes because sometimes you kind of get lost. So 7y is correct, and that's my answer. Okay, on B, can I put these together? Yes, because they are both cubed roots, good. So we multiply the outsides together, and so what does that end up making? Negative 2. And then we have the cubed root of 2 times 15, and it's going to be x to what power? <coughs> x to the 7th, and then y to the what? Good. So now we can break those down. How many do I need for a group? Three, good. And so when I break down 15 to 3 and 5, are there any groups at all? Um, no. So the 2, the 3, and the 5 all get boxes. How will I write out the y's? Cubes. Cubes. So we have 3. Oh, I don't know why. I meant to do x's. x cubed, x cubed, and then one left over. Bless you. Are we good with the x's? So two groups, one left over. And then the y's, we just have a y, one y group. So on the outside, how will I write that? Negative 2, and then how many x's? X squared. X squared. OK, and then what else? Y, good. And then all my boxes that are left over, we multiply those together, and we end up with what? 30x is correct. Very good.
how many are you going to need for this next one on C? Four. Four. Okay, do you guys want to give this one a try on your own? Okay, give it a try. First three to get it right, get a candy. So raise your hand once you have it. So the correct answer was 3a squared and then the fourth root of 108a squared b squared. So let's go through this one real quick. A lot of you forgot that you needed 4 for a group and you were just trying to get 3 for a group, I think is where some of you messed up. So let's work through this real quick. So we have 3 from on the outside and then the fourth root, we have 18 times 6. And then I have a to what power? 10 and b to the second. So when I break down 18, if you have 9 and 2, 9 is 3 and 3, 6 is 2 and 3, do I have 4 of anything? No. And so basically, if you want to like go backwards and cross all that out, I'm like, I'm going to just box those two numbers. Easier to multiply those two things. With the A's, I'm going to have A to the 4th, A to the 4th, and A to the 2nd. That makes 10. And then B squared is just left over. So when we go through here, those are left over, left over, left over. So I'm only taking out two groups of A's. So I end up with 3A squared. And then the fourth root, when you multiply 18 times 6, that's 108. And then A squared, B squared, left over inside. Any questions? OK, let's go ahead and turn the page. So this next part is dealing with division. When you have two roots that are dividing or written as a fraction, if the, both of the numbers are under roots, you can reduce them. So I always start by reducing because oftentimes it makes the problem easier. Okay. Um, another thing it says is to rationalize all denominators. Do you guys remember what that means? Does that sound familiar to any of you? You just can't remember what it means? So rationalizing the denominator means that you cannot, let's just write this out, have roots, <coughs> bless you, in the denominator. Oh, you can't see it right.
So on A, do you notice, could can 2 and the square root of 50, can, can those reduce at all? 2 can divide evenly into 50, right? So when I reduce 2, that becomes what? 1. And when I reduce 50, it becomes 25. Do you guys know what the square root of 1 is? 1. And what's the square root of 25? 5. And there's your answer. Okay. On B, I can't reduce anything there. Okay. But the issue here is that I have the cubed root of 7 in the denominator. So we have to rationalize it. How many sevens would I need in order to make a group of sevens so that I didn't have a root in the denominator? I need a total of three. So right now I have one. So how many more sevens do I need? Two. You guys are so intelligent. Okay, so in order to rationalize the denominator, I'm gonna multiply the denominator by the cubed root of seven times seven. But in order to make it fair, exactly. So we're multiplying the top and the bottom by the cubed root of 7 times 7. Because if I were to cancel this all out, see how it would just reduce to be 1? Do you guys agree with me? Mm -hmm. And so we're basically just multiplying by 1, which is okay to do. We can multiply anything by 1 and not actually change the problem. But by doing this, we are rationalizing the denominator. So notice how there is a group of 7s. And so my denominator now is what? Seven. On the top, what does it become? Good, yeah. And seven times seven is what? Forty-nine. And you can have a one in front if you want to, but we know that there's a one there even when I don't write it. Could I reduce these? No. Why not? They're not both in roots. Okay. And so this ends up being your final answer, and you have rationalized the denominator. Okay, do we have any questions there? Okay, can I reduce anything on C? No, why not? Very good, they're not both in roots. Now, I notice that this is what type of root? A fourth root. So how many do I need for a pair? Four. Now, you can do this different ways, but I have found that, so I don't have to reduce at the end and do a ton of work, I would break this down into simplest form right now. So 12 would break down to what? 2 and 6. And then 6 breaks down to 2 and 3. Okay. So what I'm going to do is rewrite this. So I have the fourth root of 2 times 2 times 3. And then on top I have a 2. Has everyone okay with that so far? So based on what we know, what will I need to multiply the top and bottom by in order to rationalize the denominator? How many more twos will I need? Two, two more twos, so I'm gonna go two times two. And then how many threes? Three, because three, I have one and I need a total of four. And then whatever I do to the bottom, I also have to do to the top. So I have 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. I like doing it this way because I can visually see everything. I can now make my, there I have a group of 2's. And then we also have our group of 3's. So what does my denominator become? 6. Six. Now on the top, I don't have any groups, do I? So we're just going to multiply all that together. So 2 times 2 makes 4. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. And then 4 times 27. Well, 108 is correct. OK, can I do anything further here? Good, so notice how both the two and the six are not under roots. I can reduce those. And so two divided by two reduces and makes one, but we don't have to write the one. And then six divided by two is three. So this answer is the fourth root of 108 over three. 
any questions there. Okay, let's do D together, and then I'm going to have you try E on your own. So D, what am I missing on D? How many do I need from a group? Three. I can't break down five, so how many more fives do I need? Two. Five times five. How many more Ys will I need? One. Because there's already two, I just need one more. And whatever we do to the bottom, we also have to do to the top or the numerator. So we get a group of fives. We get a group of Ys. So when I write that, what does it become in the denominator? 5Y. And then what will my numerator be? 4 and the cubed root of... 25y. Do we have any questions? Okay. E. Try that on your own. Remember that it's oftentimes easiest to simplify first before you start rationalizing the denominator. So if you notice anything can cancel out, you can cancel them out first. Does anybody have answers yet? One. So what reduces first? So this one, for some reason, is more difficult. I don't know. Do you, OK, so what can reduce here? The x's, right? Also, what else can reduce? So these two cancel out, and you're just left with a y there. So I'm going to rewrite this. I have root 3 over root 5y. So I have to rationalize the denominator. What will I have to, how many more 5's do I need? Just one 5. How many more y's? 1. Whatever I do at the bottom, I also have to do to the top. We have a group of fives. We have a group of y's. So my denominator is what? 5y. Are there any groups I can make from the top? No. So what I end up with? Square root 15y. Can I reduce anything here? No. Why not? Very good. They're not both under roots or not both outside of the root. Okay, last one. S. Can I reduce anything first? Yes. yes. Okay. So looking at the numbers, 12 and 10, what do those reduce to? 6 and 5, right? Dividing by 2. Good. Okay, what happens with the A's? 1A cancels out, and this becomes a what? A squared or A2. Is that okay? And then what happens with the B's? This one cancels out. And what happens with the top? B squared. Good. And then here the C's cancel out and we end up with just a C on the top. So I would recommend rewriting this. So on the top I have the cubed root of what? Six. 
Perfect. Denominator, what do I have? 5a squared. Is everybody good there? Okay, so it's cubed root. So how many more fives do I need? So five times five. How many more a's do I need? One. Good. And whatever we do at the bottom, we also have to do to the top. So I have my group of fives, and I have my group of a's, and so that denominator becomes what? 5a. Okay, now looking at the top, are there three of anything I can take out? No. So we have the cubed root. 5 times 5 is what? 25. And so I have to multiply 25 times 6, which is? Very good, 150. I think about 25s and quarters, so if you had six quarters. Okay, and then we'd write that a letters in alphabetical order. So we have? A, B, the square, second, and C. Perfect. And can I reduce anything? Uh, no. no, and why not? Uh, yeah, there's, you have to both be under the cube roots or something both outside. Mm -hmm.